evening everybody, I'm here with Joe Jaber today uh, in his studio. We're just going to have a brief informal conversation. Uh, I want to pick his brains a little bit. I see him as a little bit of a renaissance man and chaps like Joe we don't run into all the time. Joe, how are you? No, I'm fine. Nice meeting you. Good, good, good. I see we've interrupted you at the beginning stages of a... Uh, is this a commission of yours or something? No, no, just... this, is, this is something I've been working on for the last couple of weeks. In between the paint making, okay. Business, so, but this is not a commission. So not a commission. Now. All right. There is other commission work that I'm going to start now. In between working on this one, yeah. Because I like prefer to work on two or three paintings more or less at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's just Maybe. waiting time to for thickness to dry. Right. Yeah. Now, an oil. How long would you normally have to wait? I know an acrylic. I give it an hour or so, and I'm good to go. Um, on oils, is it longer, shorter? Depending on the technique that you use, waiting weight or um, with glazes, thin glazes, or the amount of glazes you're going to put on. That's why I prefer to work on two, three at the same time. Now I've seen some of your work and I must say I'm very impressed. And I noticed okay. it goes into more the surreal side of the art movement. Is that a motivation for you? Is that something you buy into or is it? No, I've always been a surreal artist probably all my life. Um, I've done a little bit of writing, not, not that intense, but I'm, I, I'm just a, a big fan of surrealism. Okay. Um, um, Surrealism, but my personal choice of art that's my favorite is will always be naive, naive art. But I like the loose style of the naive art, the, the faster work, the bringing your brain, using your brain and bringing it across. Yeah. This is back to the old master's tradition of, of working in layers and working in layers, layers and um, and working grayscale, I work in grayscale a lot okay. and working places on top of that. But that was partly also my, my passion for the paint. I've always been fascinated with the fact that you go out and you actually make your own oils. You go and you get the, the raw materials from the hills around here. Yeah. You do your thing. Now, the vibrancy between an acrylic and what you make, your, your paintings just pop right out. And the vibrancy is because it's a natural... Uh, it's a natural... Yeah. The, the reflective property. It's, it's about the reflective part. Now explain that to me. So when I make paint, or, or, or then is, that's the paint that I love in my work. Um, you work with a with a with a micro particle of between 10 or 20 or 30 microns. It's, it's slight. There's a slight difference than towards a nanoparticle. Yeah. You, know, you still get a, a flow with it, but it's not that margarine buttery feel. Right. Um, you can make it buttery. Yeah. Just add a little bit of more oil. Yeah. Um, but um, mine is on the on the edge of being. You can't put in more pigment, you can't put in less oil. It's, it's on the, or more, it's minus balanced on the thing. But it's not just something that there's a recipe book, you do it and then and, and, mm. and it comes like that. You have to, um, you, you're constantly working with your fingers in your hands to feel the paint, to look at it while you're working and right. doing little tests in between. So, and each pigment is different. Mm. But now basically what happens, if you take this, you, you bind it in oil yeah. and you keep your, um, um, your CPVC, um, critical pigment volume, you keep it at a, at a spaced out level so that only the parts between the particles is filled with oil, yeah. nothing else. There's yeah. no waxes, no, no, it's just pure pigment and, and, and oil. Yeah. So what happens is the way that the light falls on it scatters through it better. That's, That's it. how you get that glow in the old masters. Uh, okay. But your high expensive paints can do the same um, or create that, that effect because it's it also not all is um, 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 synthetic pigments, they do have some yeah. um, proper genuine. Yeah. Um, mine is just the, the, one, one, I mean, the, the, the things that I'm busy with with, with my series of paints, it's, it's the South African natural earth, it's our own earth, our own alcas, umbers, oh, wow. and, yeah. and, and different rocks, so it's our. Comes from our everything. Country. Yeah, it comes from South Africa. The names also is the origin where I get the pigment from. Okay. Or the area that I get the pigment from, like Al Kharabis Oka is from the Al Kharabis waterfalls. Okay. You know? Now, if you actually if you take that the, the Al Kharabis color and you you just smear it over a canvas yeah. and you look at a, a proper photo of the Al Kharabis waterfall, mm. you can we, we actually did this one. You can actually see that it is it's, it is Al Kharabis waterfall. <laughs> and the pigment comes exactly <laughs> from there. Now you're getting all your pigments here in South Africa. At the moment, I will use some in the future. I mean, this, yeah. but the, the, the first series is the African Natural Earth series. Yeah, yeah, so right. that's why I started. Now, this begs the question that if you look back to the Renaissance period, uh, uh, Da Vinci, Michelangelo, uh, Raphael, all these guys that mix their own paints, uh, and 
they were very limited in what they could get because of the geography. So the candemum yellows, the blues and stuff that come out of the east. But in the, South the, Africa, um, you have access um, to Rembrandt, Rembrandt, for instance, yeah. he only worked with 17 colors, um, 16 to 17 colors. That yeah. was the matter. Yeah. I think if, if, if you give today's modern day paint to those painters, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to use it. No. Especially with the students here. They'd probably throw it back at us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And chase us because out. The, 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 yeah. the, 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 Pigments, and yeah. they made their own pigments. They acknowledge about the pigments because they made, and, 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 and a lot of those cases they don't always buy their pigments. They actually made it themselves. Yeah. They had the knowledge to do it. Yes. And that's why somebody like um, um, Rembrandt was experimenting with adding um, um, glass into his paint. Um, um, okay, yeah. Different to create different effects. We're talking about refraction. Yeah. Off of off of the paint. Do you ever consider the light as part of the medium when you paint? So, for example, um, I've seen paintings that look one way in a bright light and a different, different way in, 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 in a, a low light. light yeah. Do you consider I, that I at always all? take that into, um, um, into consideration when I, for, for, I've, or I've always done it over the years. Yeah. Now, art and art history uh, is full of very rich and, and good stories. You've got Van Gogh in his ear, you've got uh, uh, Frida Kahlo walking up to Diego Rivera and yelling at him. Do you have a story that you like from art history that you enjoy, that, that inspires you maybe, that causes you food for thought? Food for thought? Yeah. You know, um, there's, there's one, yeah, there's, there's a couple, but there's one that's over the, over the years. It's, it's not actually written down the whole okay. thing, but okay. um, it was a, a one of my lecturers when I started studying art. I only studied for two years. Yeah. Um, he came from the UK and he was a, a, a artist for Henry Moore. Um, and 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 in our sculpture, but but Henry Moore employed a couple of artists that helped him to yeah. to do the thing. He'll make them little mushroom markets, and then they'll do it on a bigger scale. That's it. And he used to tell him the story about his wife. He had a very difficult wife. <laughs> and when he was working in his studio and hammering away and chiseling whatever, yeah. um, whenever he stopped. It was like minutes later his wife would come and say, are you still working all day? And then he's got to go back and work. And then eventually he developed the, the thing that was hanging on a, on a, on a, uh, from the roof, but it will tie the hammer to, to it, and then he'll sit in his chair and he'll take his feet like that. He'll sleep in his chair and he'll just go around with his feet. So that his feet go down, down, down. So his wife doesn't bother him. <laughs> no, so he could get some sleep. Um, yeah, okay, but I mean, um, it's good if you've got great people around you always. It's, it's difficult, yeah, but that's basically what outstanding story for me because okay. of um, it's, um, ingenuity. Ingenuity, and, is, and, and, and I mean, the yeah, artists. Yeah, and, and the, to bring, it, bring in the link of the artists, I mean, the hours oh. that you have to work. I mean, it, it's well, sometimes the ridiculous hours. Oh. Well, you know, it's good when you can call your. I want to sleep now, I'll go to sleep. I want to wake up, I want to paint you. Literally, as an artist. Your lifestyle has to be like that because you, you know, one can never create on demand. I don't know if you can. Uh, we create on feeling, on inspiration. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I wake up at 11, I'll start painting at 11 o'clock at night. Uh, more often than not, that's the case. Um, yeah, no, that's no, that's, a, that's a fact. But also, I mean, it it it's, it takes it does take to be a full-time artist. One of the first things that you will learn that will give you some you know, of, of, of success is you have to be dedicated in some sense, but you gotta have a lot of discipline. Mm. You gotta work. You gotta be finished. I mean, the more you work, the more you will gain. Well, um, um, you yeah. have gotta put in that hour. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 easy to say for me as a professional artist that oh, I'm not in the mood today, I'm not in the mood today. Look, I mean, sometimes you're, you're totally drained or whatever. That's when it. you finish just a large painting, you don't take a couple of days just to recuperate or whatever. That's so it. Yeah. Get your brains back into yeah. working on this. But um, the, the days even when you feel, don't feel like work, you got to sit and work. I mean, it's, yeah. it's easy to say, no, I'm going to go wherever I want to go. Yeah. Um, I mean, sometimes my neighbors will see me for two, three weeks that I don't even go outside out, outside of that gate. I mean, yeah. I'm just sitting here working and the, the light is on till two, three in the morning, four in the morning. Um, yeah. So you get, if, if, but you get used to it. I mean, yeah. um, um, but it's it way becomes part, it's a way of life, it becomes it's part of it. Yeah. So it's easy to say, as, I'm going to wait for the inspiration, but it's another thing to, the dedication and the focus yeah. to stay focused. Would you ever choose going back to a normal, no, never, 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 never. So it truly is a state of mind, and it's a, not only 
brother, everybody's creative. Everybody can be taught to paint. I believe that. Maybe not at Casa or Van Gogh level, but everybody can be taught to release that. Exactly. Uh, exactly. That, that creative energy. However, to choose a life as an artist, you have to choose the whole package. And Everything that comes with it. Yeah. You've got I've to make those sacrifices. And I've found the more money I have in my back pocket, the less inspiration I have. Oh it's, yeah, uh, yeah. So <laughs> it's kind of... Yeah, no, yeah. it's a fact. I mean, um, um, but that's why I say that's where the discipline comes. Okay. It, it, it becomes, but after what? Why well, it becomes part of your lifestyle? This I mean, you, you, it's just you, you, you want to create. Um, okay, so when these guys uh, interviewed me, they asked me three questions, and I thought, well, what three questions are we going to ask you? And we met previously before. I'm not going to ask you three. I'm going to ask you one, and it's not so far from the topic. So light refraction brings out the color. This morning uh, NASA produced a photograph of the first ever black hole. And when one considers that you have to have a reflection of light Hi. to even take a picture of the black hole, what are these guys up to? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite simple. Uh, yeah, but they took the first photograph. <laughs> they took the first photograph. It's impossible to take a photograph of a black hole because it sucks the light in and never sends anything back. So how now are they putting... Why, why are they now, this morning, coming out and saying, we've taken the first photograph of a black hole? Uh, anyway. So, but there's, Joe, guys are blind for this like me. Yeah, yeah but there's, a, there's another pigment that was developed just recently. It's Van Vanta Black. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, all, it's a nanoparticle, but it's almost like a nano tube. Okay. Now, if you take this canvas and you crumple it up, mm -hmm. even if it's aluminium and it's painted, you crumple, crumple it up. There's zero. It's 0 0.00096 something around right there. Mm -hmm. That the reflection is. You can't see nothing. Yeah. If you this close from it, you can't see the see object. It, no. Yeah, that's Vanta Black. But I mean, the same thing we're talking about the black hole. Yeah. It, this is, that black is literally like a black hole. Absolutely. I mean, but it's humongously expensive. Yeah. The pigment itself I can is, imagine. Um, um, and why would you want to paint something that nobody can see? No, so, wouldn't that be uh, great? Uh, I'd paint a Use the black wall. as black. <laughs> use the black as black to paint something. So that's it. Yeah. Or a sculpture. Because literally when you, when you make a sculpture with it, and, oh. it and, and they paint a sculpture with it, yeah. and you look at the sculpture, you can't see, no, there's no light reflection from any side. It's just a black spot. Black strip, yeah, yeah. You just see this black spot in front of it. Only like once ball. you look at the profile from the side, then you can see the, the profile. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's Jenna, thank you so much. Um, should anyone want to get a hold of you to buy your paints or get a commission, how would they go about doing that? Do you have web page or that the, the, the easiest and the most comfortable today is just through Facebook. Joe, it's been a pleasure as always. Thank you so much for the time. And, uh, nice meeting. Yeah. Good luck with this one. I want to see it when it's done. I'm seeing musical notes and the dancing lady. Yeah, it's a collapse of. Uh, it, 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 it'll start now. So. I don't know, well, I'm definitely going to stick my head in and Plant have a look. Yeah. Good luck and enjoy it. No, thank you. Thanks guys for watching and we'll see you next time on Art Canvas TV.